Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. The internet is officially hilarious because somebody posted this and I just had to share it. They said you catch a charge and you're facing serious jail time and the rapper that's shown on your birthday month is your co-defendant and has to stay quiet. Are you safe from prosecution or is that ninja gonna snitch? Okay, so if you're born in January, your co-defendant is Kodak Black. If you're born in February, you got NBA Youngboy. March is 21 Savage. April is the baby. May is Little Baby. June is Little Dirk. July is Kevin Gates. August is Takashi69. September is NLE Chopper. October is Drake. November is 50 Cent. And December is Soldier Boy. Yo, let me know in the comments. Are you going to jail? <laughs> Listen, all I'ma say is that, like, if your behind is born in August, you're screwed. <laughs> Yo, hit that like button. Now, check this out. The other day, a young TikToker named At Bellatown dropped a video where he was reading Nicki Minaj for filth. Check this out. Nicki Minaj is essentially the Dr. Seuss of her time, and what I mean when I say that is she's objectively a disgusting and reprehensible person by pretty much all metrics of basic humanity and common decency, yet her one singular talent that appears to be an innate ability to rhyme words together in a silly fashion that particularly resonates with children has cemented her with a legacy she really does not deserve as much as many female rappers who came before her. In case you're not already up to date, the self-proclaimed queen of rape has spent the past 24 hours deflecting from the fact that her her husband is a convicted sexual predator who is not allowed near public parks or elementary schools by making fun of Megan the Stallion for getting shot as well as referring to her as Bigfoot. It's always amusing to me how Nicki Minaj immediately jumps to making fun of other people's appearances as if she didn't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in 2008 getting illegal Craigslist butt injections from some guy in his basement. And not just that, she lied about it for 10 years and only confessed after her ass cheeks were visibly deflating in public and everybody could already tell. And listen, I'm not at all reveling in the fact that she's a terrible person. I was a very big Nicki Minaj fan growing up. Ask anybody who went to middle school with me. I loved her so much I would defend her to anybody who would listen. I saw her doing that and I was like huh finally some real music however around 2018 when she started intentionally surrounding herself with sex offenders I kind of fell off the wagon she was announcing her associations with them faster than she was dropping new music and it's always especially humorous to me when I see Nicki Minaj as well as her fans attempt to defend her by saying you only attack the men she associates with for being sexual predators because you don't have anything on her mm, I beg to differ barbs because not only are we talking about a woman who once gave a lap dance to a 13 year old boy we're talking about a woman who once made a song with a then 16 year old little twist in which she says these lyrics in conclusion yeah she's uh she's going to hell let's hope all that silicone doesn't release too many toxic fumes while she's burning well after he released that video on TikTok, Nicki Minaj's fans went ham on his kid. And not only did they dox him, but they also had his TikTok channel banned. I mean, it got so bad that this little kid had to jump back on the internet and apologize to Nicki Minaj. Check this out. I can't believe I'm making this fucking video right now, but basically Nicki Minaj fans are attempting to dox me, messaging family members as well as people who aren't members of my family, sending them shit. Apparently they got somebody's address. I am sorry. I'm so sorry that I disrespected Nicki Minaj. I saw a lot of other people doing it. I thought I'd add my two cents. I'm very sorry. I'm autistic. Sometimes things come out a lot harsher than I mean for them to come out. I don't actually think she's like the worst fucking person ever. I do think she's done some things that I don't agree with. Please take it up with me. F f come to me. Tell me how much you fucking hate me. Please leave my fucking family members out of it. Here's the thing. I have family members who like Nicki Minaj. I have family members who saw that video and were like, Bela, I don't agree with you. And you're fucking threatening people who agree with you. What kind of fucking sense does that make? I really don't know what else to do at this point. I did not think that video was gonna go that fucking viral. Usually my videos don't go that viral, especially on fucking Twitter. I just, I'm gonna call the cops to try and simmer this down in any way I can. I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm really sorry. Yo. This kid went hard, and although I don't think that he should have referred to like Nicki Minaj as the queen of awe, um, I do think that he has a right to his opinion. 
and I also think that TikTok should give him his channel back because we live in a country that's supposed to be founded on principles like free speech. And the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights of the Constitution does not say that you have a right to free speech as long as Nicki Minaj and the Bobs aren't offended. Give that kid his channel back. And let me say this, because this is what I don't like and I also don't respect. Earlier in the week, Megan Thee Stallion dropped her song in which she referenced Megan's Law, which was basically saying that Nicki Minaj's husband is a smexual offender. No boundaries. Then Nicki Minaj came back and basically called down Megan and also was like talking about conjuring up her dead mother. Once again, no boundaries. So how come when the kid jumps online and he has no boundaries, all of a sudden now, everybody got boundaries? And I know, somebody's gonna come in the comment section like Sauce, but Nikki and Megan know each other. They got beef. This dude don't know Nikki. Listen, when you jump on the internet and you show that there are no rules to engagement and you also show that there's no low to how low you'll go, don't be surprised when other people follow suit. But while we're talking about Megan versus Nikki, let me say this. After Nicki Minaj went on her three day rant, she turned around and dropped her diss track called Bigfoot. Now, I listened to the song, it was alright, but let me say this, cause nobody else is gonna say this to Nicki. It wasn't a knockout. Why in the heck is Megan Thee Stallion still in a rap conversation? If you're the champ, you need to knock this chick out. Because the bottom line is this, when Mike Tyson used to get into the ring with his opponents, it was like one, two, three, boom, 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 boom. They're down on the mat. And there was no conversation to be had or debate to be had because the victor was indisputable. Why are you still allowing these chicks to have room to breathe? Stop making these like quick songs that you just run in the studio and slap down without like really thinking about them. Get focused and knock these chicks out. Because as far as I'm concerned, Megan Thee Stallion just gave you the perfect opening for you to like give it an uppercut. And you didn't do it. Why? Because you were too busy like ranting on Twitter because you got caught up in your feelings instead of like putting them lyrics together and putting them bars together and knocking her the F out. And I'ma say this once and I'm not gonna say it again. Nicki Minaj better stop playing around because even the champ can mess around and get knocked down by somebody like Buster Douglas. And guess what? Megan Thee Stallion might be your Buster Douglas. Listen, let me know in the comments. Do you think that Megan Thee Stallion is Nicki Minaj's Buster Douglas? <laughs> now, check this out. The other day, Krishan Rock went and got a tattoo of Blueface's face tattooed on her face. And after she did it, Blueface's mom was like, yo, y'all need to pray for her because this is all y'all's fault. Check this out. I fought for her. I fought to get her out. Y'all said, said I was jealous and I wanted my own son. But that's okay. We gonna pray for her anyway because we all been there. We all been so in love that it, that we don't even think about ourselves. You know, we all been there. Her love is just a different kind of love. It's a little, it's a little harder. It's a little stronger. But I, I'm telling you, y'all people who encouraged and inspired her to do that, that's bailing on her right now and not praying for her, shame on y'all. Y'all gonna get it too. Y'all inspired that behavior. She bowed it, bowed it. And don't abandon her now. Now's the time for you to stand in that gap. I know you probably ain't never seen that before. And it's a little crazy. Matter of fact, it's a lot fucking crazy. But y'all better stand in that gap for her. I know that. Because, uh, <laughs> y'all told somebody's mama they was crazy. And that, and I was jealous when I was trying to save my son from this. Remember, y'all did that to me? Don't do me. Don't do her the way y'all did me. I can handle it. I don't give a fuck what y'all think. But obviously, she cares what y'all think. To destroy her beautiful face like that. For somebody that don't even want her. And she know he don't want her. Now y'all to help psychologically damage this person. And now y'all want to unfollow her and bail on her. Now you're supposed to be standing in the gap. Now is when you're supposed to be showing her love. Not, not yesterday. Today. Don't unfollow her now. She's gone. Y'all pushed her over the ledge. See? See what y'all done did? Y'all done pushed her over the ledge. It's all your fault. <laughs> Yo, who is this chick kidding? 
Listen, let me break this down for you because this is what I actually believe. I believe that Krishan Rock and Blueface's main source of income comes from social media. All the arguing, the bickering, the fighting, that's how they get paid. And now that Blueface is locked up behind bars and in that cage, Krishan Rock has to think of different ways to try to stay relevant so she could collect some checks. Hence, the tattoo on her face. Now, because their income is so dependent on social media and they have to keep getting more and more absurd in order to maintain their lifestyle, I think that all of them, including the mother, have driven themselves crazy. But here's the thing, I don't think that any of them are actually aware of how far they've actually flown down the cuckoo's nest. So yes, we do need to be praying for Krishan, but boy, we need to be praying for the mama and the son too, because both of them are cuckoo too. Now, check this out. The other day, Math Hoffa was on Vlad TV, and during their discussion, Vlad decided to show an old clip of Fredo Bing talking about how older black people are the most racist people he knows. Source, can you please play that clip? Essentially, I had uh, Fredo Bing on my show the other day. We were out in New Orleans. We filmed it. And what I brought that up, what he said was like, old black people are some of the most racist people he knows. I feel like sometimes older black people can be the most racist people in the world. <laughs> but, uh, like, is it sometimes it's just a stairs? Like, we've grown up, growing up, like, you go down to the store or something, or oh, 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 oh. we're talking to a white man, you know what I'm saying? It's just how we grow up, so, and, and switch to the older folks, you know, they grab, Pants were treated like this, so they just grow their slave mentality sometimes, you know. Oh my goodness. See, this is exactly why you don't let kids sit at the adult table. Because when you're having like serious adult conversation, they come in and they don't even know what the heck they're talking about. The bottom line is this. Most older black people are not racist. However, they have experienced something called racism. So when they warn you as a young person that you might want to be careful, it's because they know some things that you might not know. And they're warning you because you're dumb behind and skipping down the street acting like the world is made of cotton candy, candy canes, and rainbows. So let me see if I can explain this in a way that even a child can understand to Fredo Bing and everybody else who like thinks like him. Just because an older black person warns you about dealing with certain white people, that does not make them racist. However, they usually issue warnings about you to be careful about racism. So here's an example. If I take you to the zoo and I say to you, don't stick your finger into that lion's den. Who's the threat, me or the lion? I mean, y'all really got to start learning the difference between somebody who's a racist and somebody who is reacting to having experienced racism. Listen, when I was younger, we used to travel to Florida a lot. And when we were in Florida, we used to have to like drive through some sundown towns. And when we wanted to stop at a store, my great grandmother would say, listen, when you walk in there, keep your head down. Don't speak to any of those white men. Get what you got to get and come straight out. Not because she was racist, but because she knew what racist might do. There's a big difference and people like Fredo Bing need to understand that. Now, let me share a very good piece of positive news with you. After weeks of speculation and unsurety, The Breakfast Club has finally announced that Jess Hilarious will be the new permanent replacement for Angela Yee on the show. After making the announcement, Thea Mitchum, the Executive Vice President of Programming at iHeartRadio said, I'm very excited to have Jess Hilarious join The Breakfast Club. She's a force in her own right, an actress, comedian, podcaster, and now the co-host of The Breakfast Club. Jess was a standout choice to join Charlemagne and DJ Envy to build upon The Breakfast Club's legacy of entertaining, informing, and enlightening the community. Now, when discussing her new job, which entails sitting between Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy and reading that rumor report like she's a third grader who just got hooked on phonics, Just Hilarious said, I'm looking forward to joining forces with one of the largest media platforms. I'm confident that taking a third seat at the Breakfast Club will show people that Just Hilarious is not just comedy, but culture. Listen, after all of the Dawn substitutes that they have for Angela Yee, I really think that Jess Hilarious was the best one for the show. I mean, she was the right fit, and I'm very glad that she got the job, and I'm sure she's going to do a great job. So congratulations to Jess Hilarious. And let me say this, 
It's always good to celebrate when you get something, you accomplish something, you get a promotion, and you get like what you've been asking God for. But it's also good to celebrate when God blesses other people. Why? Because it should bring us joy when other people get blessed too. So once again, congratulations to Just Hilarious for getting that job on The Breakfast Club. Listen, let me know what you think about the kid on TikTok who basically read Nicki Minaj for filth before the barbs allegedly doxed him, got his TikTok channel banned, and basically bullied him into submission. Also, let me know what you think about Krishan Rock getting a tattoo of Blueface on her face and Blueface's mom saying that it's essentially our fault. And let me know what you think about Fredo Bang going on Vlad and saying that older black people are some of the most racist people in the world. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.